In this video, I'm gonna be going over how I like to do phase four Telos. I do it in a bit of an interesting way that I don't think is really shared anywhere else. It's pretty much just a strategy that I use, but I really like it. Uh, I like it for a couple of reasons. The first reason is it is exceptionally safe. I have not died on phase four of Telos in over a thousand kills, and I even recently completed a 200 kill streak at Telos on my hardcore Iron Man. So I feel very, very comfortable with this phase four method. The other thing I really like about this phase four is it does not change at all with Enrage. So if you're at 2,500% Enrage, it's identical to how you would do it at 0% Enrage. And that's really nice because you can practice it as you're pushing Enrage on the lower Enrages, and it will just work forever. The other thing I really like about this method is if done correctly, Telos will not auto attack you a single time for the entire phase four. So he literally won't hit you once. He won't hit you with a single special attack. He won't hit you with a so much power, anything at all. So very consistent, very good, very safe. Let's get into it. So first off, although there is a way to do it with magic that is very similar to this, uh, for this method, we're going to be using Necromancy. I think it's the combat style that most people are using for Telos, so it kind of makes sense to use it in this method. Phase 4 doesn't start in Phase 4. The prep for Phase 4 starts in Phase 3. So by the time you're ending Phase 3, you want to look for two different things. First off, you want to make sure you have at least three souls, uh, which are the little circles above my head. And then the one other thing you're going to want to look for is you want to make sure that your conjurers have at least 15 seconds left on them. If they've got less than 15 seconds on them by the end of phase three, you're going to have a little bit more trouble on phase four start. So if they're looking a little bit low, what you're going to want to do is just put on like an Excalibur or something to dismiss your conjurers and then resummon them on phase three. You're also going to notice I've got an ability tracker open so you can actually just look at it too and take my irritation that way. This method's really nice uh, because even if you go into phase four with 0% adrenaline, it works the exact same way. Uh, but we'll get into that and kind of some edge cases a little later on. For right now, I just want to show you the very basic phase four and how it works most of the time. So we're going to head into phase four and I'm just going to be spamming Soul Strike. Soul Strike is the first ability you want to cast. And funnily enough, it's also the second ability you want to cast. Uh, the first time you use Soul Strike, it's going to break Telos's freedom. And then before Telos has a chance to attack, your second Soul Strike is actually just going to stun him in place. So what you're going to want to do here is use Soul Strike twice. And then after you've Soul Strike twice, you want to use your Death Guard special attack. And that should get it all the way to the phase point. Uh, the Death Guard special is especially good here because it's also a very lengthy stun. So the stun is just going to give you a bunch of time to get prepped before the first font. It's worth noting though, if you don't have enough adrenaline, you can just spam Soul Strike the entire time. And you could even spam it five times in a row. Telos will not be able to attack you a single time and you'll get it to the HP cap. Once you've got the boss to phase HP, what you're going to do is pretty simple. First thing you're going to do is you're going to click on an Excalibur or take off your lantern just to dismiss your conjures. And then you're going to put your lantern back on and you're going to resummon all of your conjures. You're doing this just so that they've got a whole bunch of uptime and they're going to be available for the next sections of the phase. The one other thing I did there is I swapped pants and the pants that I've swapped onto are pants that have the clear headed four perk on them. Clear headed four is awesome. It makes anticipate last significantly longer, which makes it so that you are going to be completely volcanic golem proof. Uh, this method will also work with clear headed three, but having clear headed is very important and it helps a lot for the way that we're doing this. I'm also not really a fan of a clear headed switch and just swapping to it before every anticipate. It's a lot of extra actions. So we're actually just gonna leave those pants on for the entire remainder of this kill. You leave them on for phase four and also for phase five as well. Now that that's done, we're gonna redo our conjures and then we're gonna head in to the first font. The main focus for this first font is just to make sure that I'm building up souls and you could also use divert to give yourself a little bit more adrenaline. Coming out of font one, all you need is at least two souls as well as 60% adrenaline. I like to stand towards the back of the font here just because a lot of the time it makes it so that only one golem can attack me, but it doesn't really matter either way. And all we're going to do is let the font hit us while we're building souls. Now, once the font is halfway done, something that I like to do here is I like to right click a sticky bomb and I like to throw it underneath the golems. This is going to lock them in place and although it isn't necessary, it does stop them from hitting you, which is going to save you a little bit of damage when you run through them to get back onto Telos. If you want to skip this step, you're more than welcome to, but the next step is very important. What I'm going to do here, as soon as the font has two ticks left in it, if you look at its HP bar, so it's two fifths of the way from being finished, I am going to use the Anticipate ability. And you'll see it on my buff bar there, it's got 14 seconds on it which is going to be enough uptime for the remainder of the font and enough time to phase Telos to the next section. This is really important because if this volcanic golem was hitting me the entire time, it still wouldn't be able to stun me in place at any point. Next up, I'm going to throw one more sticky bomb underneath of Telos. And what this is going to do, as you can see on the screen there, is it's actually going to break his freedom so that he's susceptible to being stunned by my soul strike. And then the method is extremely simple. There's no timing required for this at all. Whenever you feel like it, just yeet a Death Skulls at Telos. Even if the first hit doesn't hit, it doesn't really matter. It's going to keep bouncing until the phase point anyway. 
Uh, and then, as soon as you see the message saying Telos is preparing to fire an Anima Bomb, uh, just take a breath, wait about one second from there, and then just start spamming your Soul Strike. And as you're going to see here, Telos is completely unable to attack me. I use Soul Strike three times in a row, very simple rotation, and he's phased. It's worth noting here that I'm at the phase HP and I still have one second left on my Anticipate, which means that even if the Volcanic was hitting me, I'm never going to get stunned in place and I'm never going to not be able to complete this rotation. The one other noteworthy thing heading out of Font 1 is you don't want to hit the Surge key and end up shooting yourself underneath Telos. If you do that, Telos is going to get Force Walked away and then Telos is going to end up standing in the wrong tile for Font 2 and it's going to be too far away for you to be able to attack while you're within the safety of the font. It's an edge case that we'll look at a little bit later because it doesn't ruin the kill or anything, but it is a little more dangerous and the timing's a little harder. So just make sure not to move Telos at all. Try not to push Telos in any way. And as you can see, if you want to do a surge or anything like that, you want to make sure that you're going in a straight line west to east. Heading into font two, I like to use devotion here and then I'm about to get stunned by this volcanic golem. It's worth noting here that I actually could use freedom if I wanted to. Uh, the freedom ability is one that I don't use at all during phase four so that it's always available in case of emergencies. This is something I mostly do because I'm currently playing on a hard cry Iron Man, but it's completely up to you with what you wanna do here. So if you wanna freedom and get right into the font, you're welcome to. I like to just stand here, sit for a second and tank it out for a quick sec. Once I'm close to font two after I use devotion, the one thing that I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna use threads of fate and I'm gonna use soul sap. This is just to make sure that I've got five souls because heading out of this font, we're going to want five souls that we can yeet at Telos. Once you head into the font, you can opt to use Reflect just to save yourself a little bit of damage, and then it's very similar to what you did in font one. You're going to wait until the font has two ticks of damage left in it, and then at that point, they're going to chuck a sticky bomb under the golems just to save them from hitting you, save you a little bit of HP. And then the last thing you're going to do, just like last font, is you're going to use the Anticipate ability. It will be off cooldown, and it's going to provide you a long Anticipate that's going to make sure the Volcanics can't stun you no matter what happens. Now, this is the only slightly precise placement. You want to be standing exactly on the same tile that I am within the font. It's basically just the closest tile that is in the font, not being hit by minions, and also within range of Telos. It's worth noting, though, if you're doing this from the wrong spot and you attack Telos from the wrong spot, all that's going to happen is you're going to get run out of the font, and then you'll have a chance to run back into the font before the Anima Bomb hits you. So it doesn't really matter either way, but if you want to do it really smooth like this, just make sure that you're standing in this exact location. And this time around, unlike in Font 1, when Tello says he's about to fire an Anima Bomb, all we're going to do is we're going to launch a volley of souls and then follow that up with our Death Guard special attack. And that is 100% guaranteed to phase Telos every single time. The Volley of Souls pretty much gets it to the HP cap by itself. That Death Guard spec's going to do another 20k damage if it could, so you're going to phase it very cleanly every time. Now, Font 3 is even easier than the first two fonts because all I'm going to do here is I'm going to put on my Excalibur to dismiss my Conjurers. I'm going to redo all of my Conjurers just so that they have lots of uptime for the entirety of Phase 5, and then I'm simply going to place myself into the font. Other than getting my Conjurers up and running and my Ghost Commanded, the one thing I'm prioritizing in this font is just to make sure that I use Soul Sap at least twice so that I've got two souls that I can throw at Telos to phase him. Because we deathmarked Telos before the fight started, Telos is going to phase at 30,000 life points, so we actually only need to do 7,500 damage here to safely get ourselves into Phase 5. Now, you might notice that I'm taking a little bit of damage in this font. The font is hitting me, and a bunch of golems are also hitting me. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on Telos, and you're also going to use the Blood Siphon ability. And what it should do is put you all the way back up to full life points without you having to eat, which is extremely nice and convenient. It's worth noting that if a Volcanic Golem is on you at this point, you're welcome to use Freedom, but you don't want to use Anticipate, because Anticipate is going to be used on Phase 5 if you get Volcanic Golems. So feel free to use Freedom whenever you want, do not use Anticipate. I'm going to see Telos is preparing to fire an Animal Bomb, and then all I'm going to do once I see that message is I'm going to wait one second, and then I'm going to fire my souls onto Telos. The souls will activate the death mark, and that will immediately send me to Phase 5. There's one other thing I do as I'm heading into Phase 5, right after volleying my souls. I cast Disruption Shield, and I also click on Life Transfer. And Life Transfer usually hits you for about four to 5,000 damage, but if you do it at this exact moment, it's actually going to be completely free. This is because when you activate Life Transfer, your Conjurers get extended immediately, but the damage hits you a game tick after that. But in the game tick after we select it here, what's going to happen is we're immune to damage because we're in a cutscene. And for that reason, I'm going to click on Life Transfer, my Conjurers all get extended, and I don't even have to take damage. And as you can see here, I'm heading into phase five of Telos. I have 100% adrenaline. I have a disruption shield active and we're ready to absolutely cruise to a successful Telos kill.
Okay, now I want to look at some edge cases. In this instance, I don't have any adrenaline heading into phase four. And because of that, I won't be able to use the death guard special. But the rotation is extremely easy and extremely fun from this point. All I'm going to do is quite simply spam soul strike over and over and over again until the boss phases. That's one. That's two. That's three. That's four. And we actually didn't even need to do it a fifth time. And then after that, I'm using soul sap. And it's exactly the same as before. I'm going to redo my conjures. I'm going to do my leg swap. I'm going to head into the font. I'm going to use divert to give me some extra adrenaline. And I'll end up out of font one exactly the same way with enough souls and enough adrenaline to use death skulls. Phasing works exactly the same way. And it doesn't really matter what adrenaline you go in on. That's one of the things I really like about this method as well. Even if you're on 0%, because Telos doesn't have a mechanic that takes away your souls, you're going to have an easy time no matter what. The one other edge case I want to look at here is what happens if Telos accidentally walks because you don't stun him correctly. On this instance, I don't stun him correctly, and you're going to see that Telos takes a step towards me to the west. And that's the one step right there. And that doesn't seem like very much, but because Telos took a step and wasn't stun locked, what's going to happen now is when I fast forward over to font 2, Telos is actually not going to be within range of font 2 where I will not be able to attack him. This is because the amount of tiles he can walk while he's phased are completely predetermined. Because of that one step to the west at the beginning of the phase, into font 2, he's now one step further west than he otherwise would be. And because of this, I will not be able to attack Telos from within the font. So this is where timing comes in a little bit more. I'm going to do the exact same thing as before, where I'm going to yeet my sticky bomb and I'm going to use anticipate, and I'm going to stand on the exact same tile as before. But it's worth noting, when I attack Telos here, I am going to be run out of the font. You don't need to panic when this happens. It's extremely safe. It's very consistent. You just need to make sure that you're volleying your souls a little bit earlier than you think you have to. So you're going to notice that I just got the pop-up saying Telos is preparing to fire an anima bomb. I'm now going to immediately volley my souls, just like that. I'm going to use my death guard special attack on Telos. That's going to phase the boss. And I'm running back inside of the font to make sure that I'm not being signed by the anima bomb. So once again, if you do it correctly, you will not have to do this ever. It's 100% consistent. But if you mess up, you're not going to lose your kill or anything. That's what it looks like in real time. All you have to do, run out of the font, phase the boss, run back into the font, and you should be good to go and continue the exact same as always. So anyway, that's phase four Telos. That's the way that I really like to do it. It's very consistent. It's very safe. And I hope it helps some of you guys out. I know for a lot of people, phase four is the most frustrating phase in the boss fight. But if you learn this method, it will go from being your worst phase to by far the easiest and best phase at every single enrage. So in my opinion, if you have any goals or objective to push Telos, this is a really good method to learn and have in your back pocket. It may not be the absolute fastest, but it's very consistent, very safe, and I hope it helps some of you guys out. So with that said, thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one.